So essentially, we've now reached the end of the course. But before I leave you, I want to speculate on three trends and, and uh, necessities of agent-based modeling that I see vitally important as we move uh, forward with uh, agent-based modeling. Uh, and this is my particular take. This is things I'm passionately interested in. Uh, but it's also capitalizing on trends we're seeing in other um, areas of computational sciences, uh, especially computational social sciences and biological and socio-ecological socio, um, uh, socio sciences. Right? Um, and one of them is the automatic generation of agent rules. Now, this is something I talked about in 9.1. Right? Um, we have this huge amount of big data that's now being collected about what humans and uh, entities are doing around the world, right? And we have sensors on everything. We have the Internet of Things exploding left and right. We have social data. We have app data. We have data about the phones in everybody's pockets, right? And the question is, can we use that in some way to define rules automatically that capture the essence of human actions in those spaces, right? Like define how humans move through the world or define how humans interact with the Internet of Things, right? Or define how um, the Internet of Things interacts with itself, right, as cars become more and more automated. Of course, these rules also need to be validated, right? And one of the ways we can do the validation is by building up these rules, making predictions with them, and seeing if those predictions carry out, right? Now, why would it be interesting to do this at an agent level, right? If we have all this data, can't we just use the data, right? But without the agent rules that predict individual level behavior, we don't really have the ability to assess what would happen if we were to change um, the incentive structure for one particular individual in that space. Now, causal state modeling gives us one example of this, but we could use many others. You could use decision trees, you could use associative rules, right? There's a lot of, you could use classifier systems. There's a lot of methods out there uh, that allow you to do this. Um, and with all the new sources of data, big data, administrative data is not new, but the ability to process it in large amounts is natural language data, text-to-speech data, social data, app data. Really being able to capitalize on this will powerfully change the way agent-based modeling is perceived in the world around us, right? And give us a lot new, a lot, a, a much more powerful toolkit to address some of those situations. Now, of course, one of the big problems with some of this data, and one of the problems that people often complain about, right, is that uh, the trace data is essentially just digital exhaust. It's data that doesn't really tell you anything. So we need ways to validate those models against real world data and calibrate those models in order to show that they're actually working well, right? Uh, we need rigorous guidelines, I believe, to follow to show that our models, the agent-based models, have been validated appropriately. I often think of this as a statistics-like suite of tests, right? Statistics is very good, the discipline of statistics is very good at saying, if you have data that looks like this and your outputs look like this, then these are the various tests you need to apply, right? And in some cases, all we would be doing is basically discovering which of those appropriate statistical tests that have already existed would be the most likely to apply in particular um, situations, right? And, and then what that means is that lends a lot of credence and credibility to the idea that this model that I've created and I've run through these tests to compare to empirical data I've seen have now been, uh, have, uh, have helped me to validate and increase my confidence in this model. Now, of course, being able to calibrate our models in order to increase that level of validation would also be useful. So making tools like behavior search, which we discussed earlier, easier to use, right, so that users can calibrate models automatically against real world data would be a very powerful step forward in this space. Finally, um, and this kind of stems off of both of those other thoughts about the future, right? If we can build models automatically, if we can construct them from these vast amounts of data that are coming in, and we can continuously validate them in some automatic way where we have a suite of tests that we know will tell us whether or not the model is behaving accurately, then we theoretically could build a tool which will automatically construct a model on the basis of streaming data, right? And by that I mean it will be pulling down, for instance, uh, stock ticker data, Twitter data, whatever it needs, and continually making a model of 
say the the, the socioeconomic status, uh, so, sorry, the economic status of the country as a whole, for instance, or something like that. Or maybe it's pulling in data from the Internet of Things when it looks at sensors that are attached to all of the street lights or the or yeah street lights or traffic lights in a particular city that detects the traffic flow and then making continual predictions about whether or not there's going to be traffic jams in certain areas so that so that policymakers and, uh, and and city managers can in real time change signage in order to um, uh, have people move around uh, traffic jams and things like that right if that was the case right if we had this ability this tool to build these these frameworks in real time that were predictive and kind of, um, well, not predictive, but able to forecast a scenarios and explore scenarios into the future, we could then use this to support real time decision making. So those are three areas, this use of streaming data, this use of big data and the ability to automatically create rules from big data, and this validation and calibration improvement that I think are critical for the future of, uh, of Asia-based modeling. Um, so, like I said, that's it. Um, unit nine, you know, we talked about big data and ABM. We talked about design guidelines. We talked about uses of ABM in terms of communication and education. We talked about advanced programming constructs like constructs like map and reduce and uh, run and run result tasks. We talked about participatory simulation, system dynamic modeling, and we talked about the extensions and the future of age-based age modeling. Uh, you'll see the unit nine slides, and you'll see the unit nine tests coming up shortly. Uh, but I want to thank everyone for participating in this course. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed teaching it for sure, and I've really kind of enjoyed a lot of the discussions we've been having on the forums uh, and through the YouTube office hours and things like that. Uh, and I hope that you uh, are able to gain something out of this. And please stay in touch as you go forward and use Asia-based modeling in your own work or for your own fun, for that matter.